Hello people in YouTube land. We're taking a look today at the Windows Technical Preview for Windows 10 Build 9841. So I've uh, already logged into the desktop. Because Windows 10 is now able to detect which type of device you're running. If you're running a desktop or a conventional notebook, you'll be presented with the desktop environment. If you have a touch device, it will automatically send you to the start tiles. So the start tiles are no longer very intrusive at all. The biggest improvement right here is the start menu that has returned actually. It's become a hybrid start menu now. You have the old fashioned Windows 7 style sort of start menu now, combined with all the start apps. So here on the side you can pin any app you like just right here in the start menu. So Windows Feedback Client is here by default because it is a, a beta version of course, or at least, well, I don't think it is even bad, it is considered alpha, I think. But anyway, I've already pinned this PC and control panel here because they are not easy to reach from here anyway. So you can still have all these uh, menus right here. You no longer just have regular applications up here like Internet Explorer, you also have all your apps. And if you scroll down, you're presented with the classic view that we're all familiar with, with all your various programs you've got installed. The Explorer hasn't changed much in looks just yet. Some icons have changed, which are uh, hinting towards, you know, more of a flat look, even flatter than Windows 8 was. For instance, you can see the network and this PC icons here. They're very flat. So is the home group, by the way. So in the final release, we're probably going to see icons that are just this style. No longer the uh, vibrant colors and the 3D-ness of the Windows Vista and 7 era icons, but just the flat style, Windows 8 style icons, pretty much. So that's pretty much what Windows 8, or Windows 10, I must say, is going to look like. Another thing that has changed is that search has now been integrated in the taskbar, so you can search from here. But most people will probably just be familiar with searching from here, from the start menu itself. So you can still t uh, type in UAC, if I don't forget the A, so you can turn off user account control as soon as you possibly can after installing Windows 10. You can still do that just fine. But you can now also do it from the search button, which is a little bit super superfluous if you ask me. But anyway, so we type in UAC here, we get the same type of deal. So there are two search ways, you know, one click from another. So if you fail to click on the big fancy start icon, you want to search something, you can just click on this magnifying glass right there. It's a bit excessive, but you know. Then we got the task view button right here. This view will allow you to select one of your open windows, it's pretty much Alt-Tab. Uh, Alt and you can also add a desktop, which is a new feature in Windows 10. So now we have two desktops. If we click it again, we can go back to the first desktop. The funny thing is, you can actually see which programs are enabled on a different desktop. Because the icon here from Internet Explorer, you can see that there's no longer, you know, a shiny block around it, which indicates that it's open, but it's actually underneath the icon, so you know it's on a different desktop. Let's add another one, another one, and another one. It doesn't really seem there's much of a limit on uh, desktops, but it's a nice feature nevertheless. And it should have been in here f for a long time. But anyway, we can now also snap four windows instead of just two. So, you know, AeroSnap has in that case not really changed much, other than that you can now snap four windows easily. If you drag it up to a corner and you release it, you snap it to that side. So let's open a couple of Internet Explorers here. No one has ever said that before. You can see, if we drag it to this corner, and that one to that one, and that one to that one. So now you can see I have a failing Wi-Fi connection going at the moment, and we have four or three other windows open right now. If we still, you know, drag it into the middle and snap it, it will snap half the screen. And I no, Arrow Shake doesn't work anymore. That's a shame. 
Anyway, and if you of course drag it to the top and release it, it will snap full screen. As we are all familiar with. So the bigger changes that uh, are now very apparent here in Windows 10 are things like the new start menu right here that now cooperates with the start tiles a little bit better and uh, you know it's overall a bit more polished if you ask me. I don't want that very intrusive start menu or that start screen with the tiles every time I log on. I have a freaking desktop computer I do not want touch on Windows. So please don't force me to do that. So thank you Microsoft for actually making this possible in Windows 10 even though you're actually two years late but anyway that's my rent part of the video so it's great that they brought the start menu back I love it it's uh, a lot more convenient now and the apps don't no longer actually open up full screen and drag you away from your desktop so let's open the Windows Store here as you can see it now opens like a regular desktop application you can even make it smaller I snap it to half of the screen snap it full screen no longer full screen full screen as in it takes up all of your space you can now just put it here on the side and open up an Internet Explorer next, uh, next to it anyway so you can now run your Windows apps alongside your Windows apps well yeah your Windows applications So can I just browse through the store, install applications I like. I'll just install this app right here. Of course it wants a Microsoft account, so I'm not going to bother with that. But yeah, you can now combine the App Store apps with your regular applications on your desktop. So you no longer have to switch back and forth. So you can do a lot of more work at the same time, pretty much. I think that the Windows Store apps will now become a lot more useful to people because you can now use them side by side. You don't have to use one at a time. So you don't have to go to the start screen to check your mail and then go back to the desktop to continue working in Word or something. You can now do them side by side on the same screen at the same time. So that's very convenient. There are no other really major things that I'm missing here, I think. Just that the overall things are a bit more polished. There are no edges anymore around the windows. So as you can see right here, the buttons are now actually touching the top of the, the top of the window. So the windows have become flatter and more compact. I kind of like this actually. And as far as I'm aware, they've changed some opening animations. But of course, I cannot really show those right now, it seems. Of course, we still get sticky notes and all that. Yeah, I think it's uh, this is a good point where I uh, where actually uh, end the video. Because I've actually gone through the most major things that are new in Windows 10 and uh, I hope that this operating system will become what Windows 8 had to be if they do it correctly I think this could definitely become a Windows 7 killer and will uh, actually you know make me upgrade because I've actually tested Windows 8 8.1 for a long time on a lot of different systems and I never could really get used to it because of just this small piece of technology right here, a start menu. Why do you take something out that's so integral to the operating system? I mean, you can, you know, evolution is a good thing, but, you know, put evolution on, this, on the things you have, not evolution on the total system itself. So don't think that it's a good evolution to go from the basis that you had that was good to something completely new and bold. Sometimes you can pull it off, but Microsoft failed in Windows 8, so... But yeah, this has been my first look at Windows 10. Hopefully you've enjoyed the video, and I thank you all for watching.